Right, this is Rob Chisholm and we're going to go through one of the new videos for the Pilot Pro people and I've chosen topic Mount Cable with deflations and possible XC routes as we'll be coming up to that time of year. I took this picture with a camera last year and I've painted it. So, quick, uh, well, where are we? Car park is here, landing area is here, takeoff is there. Now, how would I approach flying this site? First things first, trees are, are leaning over, so they've given me an aspect of information which I can glean because I know the UK has a prominent wind direction of southwest. Southwest makes the trees lean over. Next time you're at Beachy Head, possibly just note these trees and bushes, same as uh, New Haven Cliffs, you'll see they're swept over in a certain way. A lot of that's to do with the southwest wind. I know from the site guide this takes the southwest. Some people will fly here in a, a, a west, sorry, but I, I wouldn't. I suggest you don't really fly here in a west. If it's southwest, and here's the wing I made earlier, uh, that's facing into southwest. That would be into west. So you can straight away you can see airflow here. If you're flying into west, it's going to come over here. You'll be in rotor down that area. So as you pass over the trees, you'd get rotor. So generally, I fly when it's southwest, going that way. I sometimes do fly here in the west, but it's more of a forward launch in the month of April, take off here, catch the thermal, and gone. So the things to think about, Mount Caven, can you take off here, can you make your landing field? Now, if you're going to go for cross country, I suggest a good one to practice is get your thermal, go over the back, and over the back here is uh, quite flat, you can land, walk back. If you go this way, you've got a cornfield. Uh, cornfields are not so good. Uh, it's going to take you a long time to actually walk back. So when you go this way, you've got to be careful to make sure you can actually make the distance. So like I say, it's flat on top. You can always walk back, but I try, try to get people up here, catch thumbs over the back, and glide forwards. And I try to do this in very light winds, not strong winds. Now, the reason why is because you can go this way, that way, that way, this way, very quickly when the winds are light. There's nothing pushing you backwards. And if you land here on top where it's quite flat, there's no rotor. If you land down here in the quarry, there is rotor. So we don't wish to do that. So that's something to practice. The downside is you do have to do a forward or a quick rear run off and get your thermal. You don't guess it, you make your landing. Now that's a lot easier to land here than Devil's Dyke. And I think it's a lot less pressure. You do have to walk up, but hey, yeah, that's the portability of paragliding. So how does all this work? Where does the thermal come from? Well, quite often it comes down in this little black area here. It's one of the little gems you keep to yourself. The the area surrounded by trees, there's a, there's like a pool of water. Um, so in, in that area there, there's like a small round pond, and there's no trees close to it. So it's quite a, uh, exposed. So this side gets the sun. So generally the sun's over here when we're flying. And the airflow is going that way. All the thermals and everything are going that way. They're, they're travelling to the northeast and coming from the southwest. Now this side here gets hot. The other side where the pond is, um, is, is open like that. So all of these trees here, they're going to get hot. This side, because the sun's bearing down, gets hot. But this side's in shadow. So you see like my hand's lit there is in shadow there. So there's a temperature change. So if you imagine that circle like this, and that's in there, this side gets sun, this side does not. So this is getting warmer, and there's a pond, and this side's cooler. This side's hot. Now there's temperature change, and that releases a thermal. So the way I approach getting to that thermal is I don't ridge saw up and down the hill. I take off here, and I fly to it. If anything goes wrong, I can always turn left, turn right, and land in the landing field. Now the good thing about being here, if I get the thermal, I go up, I'm rewarded, there's generally no one else in my space. So I've got lots of maneuverability. So how does the thermal work? Well, you could come off the hill, you could do top to bottom even, couldn't you, going home, the thermal comes up, hits that side of the wing, that side will automatically depressurize and try to bend that way. So 
your weight will fall over to the left. So from the right, it falls over, the thumb will still go in, pushes the wing up, and you automatically turn out. Now you're in sinking air, because on the other side of rising air is sinking air, and it pushes you down. You don't feel so happy with that. So what should you do? Well, if you go into the rising air, like so, the thing to do is to turn right, weight shift right, get back into the rising air. So it's not a big thermal, because I've only got a small roll of tape. Um, but if you're in there, there's less of the wing, only the tips can get depressurised, and you can stay in that rising air. So what happens if we flew along and the thermal came down and it, you can see it would actually touch there and it's going to collapse that area, just like the video Roger put up for us. Well, the first thing to happen is the front will collapse. If you put a small amount of brake on, not too much, because remember that sinking air mass is going that way and you don't want to slow down and stay in there. And then as soon as it reinflates, you put your hands up and fly off. What the pilot did in the video, I believe, was he's in the sinking air mass, so he's, he's gone into some rising air, come out, had a collapse, overreacted, front's closed up, too much brake, puts his hands up, as it reinflates, it just goes into a spin. The reason it goes into a spin is one side's up quicker than the other, and he's gone from no airspeed in a sinking air mass putting his hands up too quickly and abruptly on his level of wing and it spins and down it goes. I'd say it wasn't a DHV 1-2, it looked higher, higher than that and this is what happens when you go up with performance envelope gliders because they're thinner they have a different ground speed. So the way to approach if you go into some sinking air is to think about how and why does it collapse the front? It doesn't happen every time. Uh, he also said on the video he saw dust devils as he drove up, so I should think it was a totally unsuitable day. Uh, also, he said in the video is cloud cover by 70% by 10 o'clock. A lot of convection, I'd say it was a very thermic day. So, I wanted to explain this. If you get half a wing collapse and you lean over to this side, which would be the left side, maintain your course, it will still fly and eventually that will pop out on its own. Now, if you get a front deflation, it's not flying. The reason it's not flying, and I think probably this would explain more to you, there's the front, there's the back of the glider. That black area represents the lift. That's the lift, that's the area that produces lift. Anything behind that, which is there, produces no lift. It's just an area where the air can flow off. So if you get the front deflation, and you put the brakes on, and in sinking air on a thermic day, when 70% of the cloud is up in the sky by 10 o'clock, and with dust devils, and you slow the glider down in sinking air, you won't have any forward speed. You've got no airflow over the lifting area, because that's the area that lifts. You're not flying. So I just think what the pilot did when oh, I'm not moving forwards and I'm dropping, put his hands up went into a spin. He put this hand up too quick, still had brake on there, and he spun. But he went from, crucially, no airspeed to a lot of airspeed. So that was someone who was too zealous on the uh, controls, and I don't think it was a DHV-1-2 glider. And this is what happens. If you slow it down and the front leading edge is not flying, you have no airspeed. So the thing to watch out for is when you put your hands up, or when, when you get that collapse, if it ever happens, I've never had one, by the way, uh, on the front leading edge, is um, think about what's happening with the air. It's probably gone down, chopped, chopped that air, chopped you. You want to get your hands up, really, get the glider flying so you can fly away out of the sinking air. Being in sinking air is not good anyway. So hopefully that will explain enough for you in regards to flying a uh, simple air like Mount Caven. And I'd like some questions so we can have some answers and get a topic going. So this area here, there's thermals in there. If it's westerly, don't land down here. Can get turbulence off there. Spineback ridge, quarry, site assessment is part of the safety aspects. My site assessment involves also where the landing is, other options for landing, and where the thermal activity is. We've followed, lastly, a flight plan of what I'm going to do that day, 
could be across country, set a goal, know where I'm going, don't just take off and fly over the back. So I think that's enough to go with. Um, so hopefully you watch the video and come back with feedback. Many thanks.